and indeed with, uh, with, with David as we look into Psalm 62. So get your Bibles. If you haven't got a Bible, put your hand up and uh, one of the lads will bring you over a Bible. Everyone got a Bible? That's good. That's good to see. Hey. <laughs> uh, so Psalm 62. Uh, and uh, we know that David, he went through so much. Uh, the title of the sermon here is God Only. Um, he learned in his life, and we can see it in the scriptures, that, you know, that David really learned how to trust in God alone. He really learned that everything else is, it, it, it leads, is a vapor, is nothing, but to really to find his, his, his all in all in, in the Lord. And, uh, and this psalm here just speaks of it beautifully. Uh, I'm going to read it out, and then we're going to have an examine through it. So thank you, Lord, for your word, first and foremost. And uh, Lord, yeah, thank you, Jesus. And just... Uh, just Move among our hearts, Lord God, today, and uh, I just pray, Father, that, um, Lord, help me just in in sharing your word, Lord Jesus, that I would do so, Lord, uh, in fear and trembling, knowing that this is your word, Lord God, and, uh, and, but also to know that you love us, and you love me, and, um, and so just, uh, yeah, pour your spirit out as we open up your word together, in Jesus' name I pray, amen. So verse 1. Uh, It says, truly my soul silently waits for God. From him comes my salvation. He only is my rock and my salvation. He is my defense. I shall not be greatly moved. How long will you attack, O man? You shall be slain, all of you, like a leaning wall and a tottering fence. They only consult to cast him down from his high position. They delight in lies. They bless with their mouth but they curse inwardly. Selah. My soul waits silently for God alone, for my expectation is from Him. He only is my rock and my salvation. He is my defense. I shall not be moved. In God is my salvation and my glory. The rock of my strength and my refuge is in God. Trust in Him at all times, you people, Pour your heart before him. Pour out your heart before him. God is a refuge for us. Surely men of a low degree are a vapor, and men of high degree are a lie. If they are weighed on the scales, they are altogether lighter than vapor. Do not trust in oppression, nor vainly hope in robbery. If riches increase, do not set your heart on them. God has spoken once, twice I have heard this. That power belongs to God. Also to you, O Lord, belongs mercy. For you render to each one according to his work. A beautiful psalm. And immediately you see, well, many things can pop out. And immediately we we see, um, you know, in this psalm, there's some trouble there. There's things that are are difficult for him in it. You see that in verse 3. How long will you attack, O oh man? And these guys who bless with their mouth, but inward, they curse inwardly. He's troubled. But what's very unusual in this is he actually is not praying in this. I'm not suggesting that you not pray. But the psalm, he doesn't say, God, hear me, help me, from, defend me. He doesn't say that. He's simply declaring who God is. And uh, that's something beautiful in it. And as he declares God... Uh, in so many ways, you see that right through. It's it's, it's actually beautiful, but also uh, in the I'm going to hang, I sound a bit nerdy here now. In the Hebrew, uh, there is a, um, and I thank God for commentaries that I don't have to study Hebrew, and someone else was able to do it for me. But um, the word ak a k, and I remember this because ach, it's easy to remember, um, is is mentioned six or seven times throughout it, and that means only. It's in verse 1, 2, 4, 5, 6, and 9, and somewhere else in 7 as well. Uh, it means only or alone. So it's always talking about in God alone, only. God alone, only is his strength, is his salvation. 
Uh, so just have that in mind, that that's the kind of what David was trying to, to portray to us, what he's going through. I often feel actually in, in this psalm, it's like I'm looking in his journal, you know? Does anyone here do journaling? Anybody? Sometimes? Can I have your journal, please? Is that okay? No? Oh, you going to pass it to me? No? Okay. Be good read. No? Uh, it's a great thing to do. I don't do it. Uh, uh, I'd love to do it. I've always intended on doing it. But it's something that I really want to do. A prayer journal now. That's something as we should really take seriously, that we should start journaling our prayers and, like, and then watch as the Lord answers. Tick, tick, tick. It's beautiful. Um, but here... We see here in the psalm, right, check this out, it's, it's, it's beautiful. This is the heart of David uh, in this. It says, he, the, the Lord is the source of my salvation, or deliverance, we should say in this way. You know, he, he delivered him from se- severe adversary. It's in verse 1, verse 2, verse 6, and verse 7. It's there, and that's four times he's saying it. You are the source of my salvation. He says, my rock, in verse 2, verse 6, and verse 7. Three times he's saying, you are my rock. My stability, he says it two times. He says, I I shall not be moved. I shall not be moved. Twice he says that. (laughs) My hope, or my expectation, he says, you are my expectation. I go a bit slower. Did you want to? Sorry, I forgot about now. Round of applause for Ryan there. Good man here. Um, sorry, we're not now. Uh, my hope is in, in verse 5, with my expectation. My refuge in verse 7 and 8. My glory in verse 7. And he has all power in verse 11. And he's the source of steadfast love and mercy in verse 12. And justice too, we can say. So we see that the source of my, my salvation, my deliverance, says a four times. And you go, hang on a second, that's, that's a lot he crams in there. Did you ever, do you guys ever do that? Do you ever just, you know, think of all those attributes of God and just, and just, and just say it? Do, in your prayer, have you, do you list? Do you ever think that? I'm not saying you have to list it off like mechanically or anything like that. But just like... God, you are the source of my thy deliverance, Lord. You are my salvation. You are the rock, Lord, that I need. You are the stability, Lord. You keep me stable. My expectation is from you because I know you are good. You will do what you say to do. You will do. You are my refuge, my glory. Uh, you have all power. And these kind of things, he, he repeats over and over in this one little psalm. And it's beautiful. And... Uh, you know, there's books that you can read and commentaries that you can read about the Psalms and you see, you know, people, they would take notes. Oh, this is where David said this. This is where this happened. This, And he said all these things. And, and like I just listed out there, four times it says this, three times it says it. We could say that, but David, you've got to love David. You know, he lived it. This was him. This was him naturally. And I don't know if you've ever said, oh yeah, God is good, and and God is rock, God is able. You ever said that? And then you freak out 10 minutes later and freak about something? And that's, it's it's just our human nature. And, and, you know, God has called us to to, to grow deeper in in him, you know? And so here we see with David, this is why David, like, is known to be a man after God's own heart. He didn't have a big theological spreadsheet. He lived it. This was a living, a living reality for David. A living reality. God, because he experienced this. He had his own family coming after him to, to try and take his throne from him. He saw everything. All these things coming on. And, but he sees that God alone is his refuge. God alone is his salvation. And also we check, we see in this here, as we read this psalm, um, my soul, verse 1, truly my soul silently waits for God. From him comes my salvation. 
And then verse 5 it repeats it. My soul, wait silently for God alone, for my expectation is from Him. And you see here, it's like, and in between that is, is how long will you attack, oh man? And, 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 and they bless with their mouth, but inward they curse. They try and take him down from his high position. But you see, he's just like, it's like he's speaking to his soul in this moment. It's like, soul, my soul silently waits for God. He knows that that's the, who God is in the deepest part of his being. He knows that he will not be shaken or moved. How do we get there? You know, I want to know how to be like that. I want to be like that more and more. We're going to discover some little tips that this psalm gives us as we go through it. Uh, verse 2, He only is my rock and my salvation. He is my defense. I shall not be greatly moved. How long will you attack, O oh man? And here we are. You shall be slain, all of you, like a leaning wall and a tottering fence. Uh, they only consult him, uh, to cast him down from his high position. They delight in lies. They bless with their mouths, but they curse inwardly. So here he is. He's witnessing evil. He isn't praying about it. He's recognizing for what it is. Uh, and how sad it is that he had his own family members and other people who were literally uh, would bless, they would pray with him, and would bless the Lord with them and say that, but inwardly they were cursing him and they were desiring to take him down. And it's a terrible thing. It's a sad thing you see that in the Christian world too. They, they, they want to, to take down. And see, we see down further down here in, um, in verse 10, it says, Do not trust in oppression. He's seen that. David had seen that in his life, where people are stepping on people in order to build themselves up, to try and make themselves more powerful. And it's, it's, it's sad to see in the Christian realms this can happen. Human beings are, and we're very fault, we're, we're faulty, uh, unless we are truly submitted unto God. Um, So, <clears throat> take that in. <laughs> All right. Um, so we see David again, this wonderful David. Uh, he says this, verse 3, how long will you attack? The only consult cast him down. And he's, this, this, he feels that, and then he's like, talks back to the soul. He says, but my soul, stop, be still, and know that I am God. My soul, wait silently for God. Alone. Here we are, that ak in, uh, in the Hebrew. For my expectation is from him. When we put our trust in other things, we expect other things only to be let down the majority of the times. We, I'm speaking on a, on a larger scale of things like that. We, we can expect uh, the government to sort out problems for us and all these things. And, and a lot of the time we get let down. Um, my soul expectation is a good thing it's a hope my hope is from him I think actually Steve prayed that today Lord we expect great things from you and uh, is that the expectation of our hearts you know um, <laughs> I believe it I know there's great things coming for us because God is so good. He only is my rock and my salvation. Verse 6. He is my defense. I shall not be moved. So he's talking about his stability. And if anyone has uh, experienced that. It's David. And kind of take your minds back to Sunday school. We remember David and Goliath. That story. And uh, I think just this is a phenomenal story. It's a phenomenal story. You see. It's, Goliath coming out and he's mocking uh, the Christ or the sorry the, the Israelites and uh, no one everyone is ter uh, terrified of this big giant scared and along comes David not even in the army little shepherd boy and I says how dare he knows that God can do it now I've heard someone say he's bigger he's bigger great I can't miss <laughs> you know and it's cool kind of an attitude like it's cool but it's, that's not it at all. 
It's not it at all. I've heard it was a, it was a, a, a well-known evangelist. You've got to be mindful of what people say because it, build it builds up man. It builds man up. It builds David up in this. That's not what David would all say. Oh, that's such a big target. I can't miss. Easy peasy. That's not what it, no. Bigger the better, no. It's like, no. <laughs> Who is with me is bigger. It's the almighty God, the creator is with me. He is my rock. He is my defense. I shall not be moved. And we'll take this guy down, Lord. Because God's glory is at stake here. And I think that's something beautiful to think about, how God chooses to use us uh, for his glory. It's phenomenal. It's phenomenal. We see why in, in, in a bit. We hang in there. Um, sorry, my mouth is very dry here. Verse 7, in God is my salvation and my glory. The rock of my strength and my refuge is in God. Again, he's just repeating all this stuff. My glory. And that's something we can boast in. We can boast in Jesus Christ. Boast in him. My God is good. All power and all authority is in his hands. What does he do? He lays his life down for us. Boast in him. Um, so here we are, verse 8. Trust in him at all times, you people. How do we do this? It answers it for you right there. Pour out your heart before him. God is a refuge. So first of all, we see David is now talking to the people. You see David's heart for the people. So as, as God speaks to us, we should be an encouragement. He wants to automatically wants to spread that out and to encourage other people. So he says, trust in him at all times, you people. At all times. Pour out your heart. And how we do that is we pour out our heart uh, to him. So I'm going to take my jumper off here. Pour out your heart before him. God is a refuge for us. I actually think it's, it's, it's a fine art, if we could say that. No, it's not. To pour your heart out. Oh, that we would do that. As a people. How we would pour our hearts out. Like water, like a glass of water, just pour it all out. All right, someone say, not like a glass of milk, where you pour out the milk on the ground, and eventually you'll see a white stain, or coffee, you'll see a black stain. You pour out water till there's nothing left. It'll evaporate. There's nothing. Pour out your heart. When was the last time you did that? It just bear it all before the Lord. All your gifts, your talents, everything you have, you say it's all yours. I pour it all out. All your worries, your concerns, your fears, everything, Lord, I give it all to you. Lord, my life, I give it to you. Trust in Him at all times, all you people. How do we do it? We pour it. Pour out your heart before him. God is good. And verse 9 it says, Surely men of, of, of a low degree are a vapor. Men of high degree are a lie. If they are weighed on the scales, they are altogether lighter than vapor. Doctor, lawyer, merchant, chief, rich man, poor man, beggar, thief. <laughs> Whatever you are. It's just nothing. It's nothing. Now, before you start saying, hang on a second. Uh, no, you're nothing. The Bible says it. 
but hang on a second. God has given me gifts. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. But you're still nothing. We're still this tiny little speck in the massive cosmos of everything. We're just a vapor. Why does God even think of us? Why? Why would he die for us? We're just a vapor. A piece of dust. Praise the Lord. David seen seen it all. He watched kings rise up in great power and might, conquering kings, and then just splat, nothing. Where are you? And someone said, you don't see the Hittites walking in New York City, you know, or whatever, around here. They, they don't, these people, these things, they rise up and they go. And I guess in, in, the, in the book of James, there's a warning about that. Uh, isn't there? It says, uh, if a rich man comes in, he's got a gold ring. Okay, I got a gold ring. But, okay, let's put into our times, if someone comes in who's a famous celebrity person comes in and we go, ooh, we, we, we have a big fuss. Ooh, look at this guy, he's here. Wow, imagine he gets saved. That'll all be great. And we give him a special seat. And then someone poor comes in just wearing a tracksuit or whatever. And you oh, don't want to dirty our pews. And you push, stand in the back. James warns us of that. Here it is. We're all just vapors, guys. We're all on the level plane. If God wanted to use someone who was, would only use someone who was rich, that, that, that eliminates, isn't it? There's only 1% that are richer. I don't know what those statistics are. That eliminates so much people, doesn't it? If God only uses the super intelligent people, you know, that eliminates me, eliminates possibly most of you. I don't want to say it, but you, you know. If God only used the super talented people, then let me know. Because what happens is we start glorifying their intelligence. We start glorifying their riches. We start glorifying their talents. We start glorifying all these things. Oh, it's because they're so talented. Or they're so ama- It's nothing like that at all. The psalm speaks goes way beyond all that. We only get this. Pour your heart. Pour your riches. If you have them, if you're blessed with that, pour it out before the Lord. This is from you, Lord. Let me use it for your glory. And may you increase my riches so I can continue to pour out and be a blessing. If you're gifted and talented, oh, praise God. Thank you, Lord. You bless me with a, with a golden voice to sing. Whatever, Lord, I give it to you. Pour it out before him. I'm not saying these things are bad in itself. But when not submitted unto Christ, it gets ugly. That's why God uses anybody and everybody. Anybody like he, he he's likes he likes the plain and ordinary the, the weak things to confound the wise. So beautiful. What kind of thinking is this? It goes. It's so beautiful and wonderful. Do you know what that means? It means he can use anybody, anybody. If you have a heart, he can use you. Particularly if it's poured out. I like that. If they are weighed on the scales, they are lighter than vapor. See the scales are here? You put them on us. It's actually, the, 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 it makes it like the, way, the scales, both of them just rise up. <laughs> it's like there's nothing in them. There's no weight at all in it. But God still uses to you, still chooses to use vapor like you guys, us. It's beautiful. And again, here, verse 10, do not trust in oppression. That's stepping on people. David had seen that, all sorts of conniving and, and, and backbiting and talk and trying to bring people down in order for them to rise up. And, and don't trust in that. 
Like if that comes up in my, I admit that. That has happened in my heart many times. I go, and then I go, oh, Lord, convicted this, this evil in me. Oh, Lord, oh, Father, I don't want that. I don't want to rise up like that. I don't want to think those thoughts. Lord, I pour my heart out. Forgive me. Pour it out. Lead me to the rock that is higher than I, Lord. I need that bigger rock to be in your shadow, Lord, when that, that, comes, that sun is burning down on me. Nor vainly hope in robbery, says verse 10. Do not trust in oppression, nor vainly hope in robbery. You, we've all stolen something. Here's one to think about, time. You ever really, really late for people? You've stolen their time. I'm oh, mad, isn't it? You've ever wasted time? We go all put our hands up. Redeem the time, the Lord says in his word. We have time. We did a study on Wednesday about the, the, the Lord's return. We don't know when that is. I actually said, I know when it is. I said, uh, soon. <laughs> that's, a, that's a silly thing to say. Anyway, but it is soon. It could be soon. It could be today. It could be tomorrow. It could be next week. We don't know. And we talked about what we ought to be doing, waiting for his return. We talked about the rewards as well. We're going to look at that again, actually. But anyway, looking at robbery, isn't it, if you ever steal something, and I thought about this before, people who, who steal, it's like, it's like a way of saying, Lord, I don't trust you to provide for me. I'm going to take that. You know, I, and, and you know, anything like that, you see, I don't trust you to provide, I'm going to steal this, this or that or whatever. And then it says, if riches increase, don't set your heart on them. Don't set your heart on them. And uh, yeah, it's in, in Timothy, isn't it? It says, uh, the, the love of money is the root of all evil. A lot of people, they misquote that. They said money is the root of all evil. That's not the root of it. Money is just a thing. It's not evil in itself. The love of it is the heart. It was in Proverbs, it says, uh, what, in Proverbs 4, it says, Watch your heart with all diligence, for out of it spring the issues of life. It's always back down to the heart. Always, always back down to the heart. If riches increase, don't set your heart on it. And what does that mean, setting your heart on, on riches? It's like, ooh, now I'm somebody. You know, it's this way of setting, there's a few different ways of looking at that. Don't set your heart on it. In verse 11, we look at here, God has spoken once, and he reiterates this, twice I have heard this. Power belongs to God. The power belongs to God. It's interesting that, isn't it? All power belongs to God. Uh, the other night I had a... Um, uh, electrical short fuse basically melted and and um, we had a thanks for <laughs> Jason calling over and uh, and Jason oh you're gonna have to call an elect you know a professional in for this and so we did and fair play to this guy he arrived at a, like half ten at night and uh, absolute hero of a man and uh, spent about twenty minutes put in the whole thing took out the melted plastic bit and re replaced it. I'm praying for the guy. <laughs> Don't get a chance to. I spoke with this guy before, and he's he's a full-on hardcore atheist fella, and uh, um, but a, like a genuine, lovely, lovely fella. Like you know, I, I really like this guy a lot, uh, and um, uh, with this, and I know he's a talker, but and sure enough, he started talking, and, and it, we were talking till after one o'clock in the morning, you know, and I'm like, oh my, look at that. <laughs> But he was kind of saying, oh, he saw a little scripture on the wall. Oh, the Lord, oh. And then he started the slagging, the usual. And then he says, ah, sure, look. Says, Why would I need God, you know? And I'm 25 years without him here now. And 
when I thought about it, I'm fine. Then he goes on and all the misery he's going through and everything else. You're, like kind of, you're not really matching up. But uh, then he started kind of slagging, sure, you're just all pack of hypocrites. You know? I said, yeah, absolutely. I'm not going to disagree with that whatsoever. And I didn't, uh, I was defending because my son was there, my, my, my 19 year old was there, and I didn't want him to be, because he was really directing his energy toward, anyway, it doesn't matter. So I, I was really kind of on the bit of defensive, and then I was like, oh, don't get so defensive. You know, God is well able for this. Relax. My soul, wait for, wait for the Lord in this. Relax. And I found the perfect time to say, and I said, yes. I said, I, I agree. Throughout history, the church has done woeful things. I said, yeah, it's, it's awful. Yeah, and he was saying, God, God is done. I said, well, no, 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 slow down there. Said, science is amazing, isn't it? He says, yeah, science, amazing things were coming up with science. But put in the wrong hands, it can be awful. Look at bombs and the nuclear bombs and everything else. What kind? That's power in the wrong hands. And there's power there in the wrong hands. And that's what I was talking about was power. And then I says, when, and the same thing when it comes to, 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 to God's power, to church and stuff, when it's put in the wrong hands or people's hearts. I said, there are awful things that have happened. Unless it is submitted to Jesus Christ. You see what the scripture tells of Jesus Christ, that all power, everything was made through him, in him, through him, and for him. All power, he could squish us all like this, and all that. But what does he do with all this power? He lays his life down. He surrenders himself up to us. This, this love, this, 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 and I'm saying this to this guy, and and it's the first time that night he just shut up. He just, I don't mean in a disrespectful way. I just quite, I could see the countenance changing him. And it was like, see, when it's not submitted onto that, we see what that is, what to do with power. Do you know in, in the doll, there's a prayer that they read out in the morning. And I know this only because last year they were trying to stop people uh, from reading that prayer in the morning. They have this five minutes before the doll starts, before they, they run the country. <laughs> and, uh, the, and in that five minutes, as, as, a, as a prayer is read out, it's a very simple little prayer, but it mentions Jesus Christ. And yeah, I was like, wow. And of course, these people were, oh, let's get rid of that. We got it. And it was voted, no. You don't, like, you don't have to be in there. You can stand outside and come back in after the prayer is read. But I thought for a moment, these people were so angry. If they actually took a moment to think about Jesus, take a moment to think about it. Even if you don't believe, even symbolically. All power is in his hands. What does he do? He lays down and he serves. He lays down his life as a ransom for many. If only the government would have actually take that on on board. Isn't it beautiful? They would actually think about that. Wow, we're to serve. We have all this power, so to speak. I, it's quite limited, to be honest. We have all this power running, running the country. If we have that little bit of an ounce of that mindset, the difference it would make. You know? So I'm glad they haven't rid of it. But all power belongs to God. Hallelujah. And he's sovereign and he loves us. And also to you, O Lord, verse 12. I mean, guys, just because I'm saying this today, I, I encourage you, go back home, read it. There's more in it. There's only so much I can squeeze in at this time. Meditate on these things. Think about these things. Um, enjoy thinking about these things. Also to you, O Lord, belongs mercy. For you render to each one according uh, to his work. <clears throat> and it finishes with that. Also to you, O Lord, belongs mercy. Mercy also can be translated as a steadfast love. Um, for you, render to each one according to his work. And you think, hang on a second, that sounds a bit like he's, it's a judgment there. He's, it's, a, it's a justice thing going on. 
but someone else said that in the New Testament. It was Jesus, Matthew 16, it says, for the Son of Man, Matthew 16, verse 27, and we were looking at this last Wednesday as well, about rewards. For the Son of Man will come in the glory of his Father with his angels, and then he will reward each according to his works. So we started talking about, wow, there's, there's rewards in heaven, you know, and positions and stuff. But be really careful before you get excited and you think, oh, I'm going to be, because we see that in the scriptures as well, don't we? And these lads, how they, oh, they got their mammy to speak to them, to Jesus, didn't they? And I said, oh, ask him to be at your right hand. <laughs> and, uh, of course, the others heard this, and it was, it was a mess. And then, of course, Jesus gives, tells them, he says, you want to be the great. Anyone wants to be great, serve. Be a slave, serve. It's a totally different mentality. And I'm sure the rewards in heaven will be totally different, too. We may think of it this way. I was like, I, I said, I was thinking, like, wow, what could it be? What's the greatest thing that you get to experience here? This being in his presence is the greatest thing. What other great thing is to bless other people? The food for you. Isn't that what a joy you get to you arrive with a basket and hey? And they're like, wow, oh my, you've thought of me and how did you know we're going through so much? What, even that you care means so much. Get to bless other people. I think a reward in heaven, possibly, it's not, that's not scripture here, could be that you get to bless other people. Wouldn't that be nice? Why not start now? There's nothing wrong with that. Be a blessing to people. I thought of another one. I thought I'd like to be the chief hugger. I thought that would be great. I thought I'd be, I'd be the hugger. Let me go and hug people. Like That would be a great job in heaven. I'd love that. But be excited. Now, it's not, you know, a people, and then some people might think, I position, and then they have to be so organized and prove to God that how great they are now and how big they're organized. And th therefore, they think they're going to be like that in heaven, that they'll be organized so, you know, be able to be a great leader as such in this way. God does not look at that. He looks at the heart. In heaven, I don't know if, John, have you ever thought of this as a worship leader? You thought you'd be in there maybe as a worship leader? Check this out. This, this could be it. You may have a terrible voice. I absolutely, you know, Kobe just sound like a dead frog, or you know, whatever, just with some air blowing through him. I don't know where that image came from. Sorry. Um, you could have a terrible voice, but your heart could be singing louder than anybody in this country. Your heart could be singing, and God's like, "There is my worship leader in heaven. Wait, till you see what I do? I take this and I'll give him a voice or her a voice." That could be the worship leader. It's the heart. Love. I think I'm just going to end with that word. Love. Yep. We're going to leave it like that. Read the scriptures yourselves. Don't take my word for it. Study them, enjoy them, enjoy our Savior. And uh, if anyone here, don't leave today without really pouring your heart out to God. Please, don't do that. He's worth it. Honestly, he'll make confusion and all this pressure that the world can put on you. And he'll turn that upside down and give you peace that you can say, Truly, my soul silently waits for God. God blesses those who wait for him. Actually, one more. I did say it's finished with love. But one more second there. This is beautiful. In Isaiah um, 64, it says, 64 verse 4, it says, Since the beginning of the world, men have not heard nor perceived by ear, nor has anyone seen any God besides you who acts for the one who waits for him. What? It's so true. He acts for the one. He, he does things for those who wait for him. For his glory. I'm sorry, why am I? I'm doing one more verse there. It says, Psalm 50, verse 15, Call upon me in the day of the trouble. I will deliver 
and you shall glorify me. Interesting, isn't it? Pour yourself out and watch God glorify himself and you give him the glory. And there's benefits. You get to go, whoa. <laughs> you know, wow. What a great God. My rock. My salvation. My deliverer. My strength. My joy. <laughs> my God. So Heavenly Father, I'm going to pray now, Lord Jesus, we thank you for today, Lord. And, and if anyone here hasn't poured their heart out to God or hasn't done it in a long time, don't wait. Do so now. If you haven't.